Okay, good morning everyone. I'm Delnaz and uh, I handle customer experience for GSK. GSK is GlaxoSmithKline Pharma, uh, a pharma company. Our primary customers are doctors or healthcare professionals as we call them. Uh, we, I mean, some of our products you must have all heard of, Augmentin, Calpol, anti-infectives. Uh, and I can also guarantee that all of your kids, the vaccines that they've had when they were born to about two, three, four years of age, 90% uh, of them would have been GSK vaccines. Uh, in our space, primarily, uh, as per the regulations in India and in a lot of countries um, around the world, we can only and only advertise and only reach out to a healthcare professional. And that is why, you know, for the larger audience in this room, uh, we would, you, you would not see any advertisement from GSK uh, directly. What you would see is definitely on patient awareness. You would have seen a recent ad around shingles. Uh, you would have seen recent ads around vaccinating of your kids. Uh, but what we do is really in the space of the healthcare professional. Now, what really does customer experience mean to a healthcare professional? Right now, think of it from a doctor's lens. He's he is there. He's seeing his patients day in and day out, and the traditional method of um, a company communicating with the HCP is that you have an MR. Right, you have a medical representative who goes to the HCP, who informs him about the product, speaks about its features, benefits, how it can be used, and details the product when he goes physically in front of the HCP and does that. At a lot of doctors' places, you must have also seen this really long lines outside of medical representatives standing. Um, in my opinion, it's a waste of time, both for the doctor and for the medical representative, especially when your product is more than 30, 40, 50 years of age, when the molecule is that old, what new are you going to tell the doctor? Classic case like Crocin. I mean, what are you going to tell the doctor, right? I mean, he knows about it. He knows probably more about it than you do. But you need to constantly remind him that yes, there is a paracetamol by the name of Crocin, which is going to you know, help you in these, these conditions. And that is where customer experience comes in. So how do you enhance this sort of an experience for a doctor uh, digitally, right? How do you reach to a doctor digitally uh, without having this physical MR, without wasting the time of both these people? And you also reach a doctor in a space that he is, uh, you know, where, where he is. So the other limitations that as a pharmaceutical company we have is that we cannot advertise directly on an Instagram or a LinkedIn or some place like that. The reason is we need to ensure that the person receiving the ad is a doctor, right? Is a qualified medical practitioner and without doing that. So on Instagram, if I post an ad, the lay public is also going to see it, right? So I cannot do that. I need to have very stringent mechanisms in place to ensure that whatever I'm serving reaches only and only a doctor. So that is briefly with regards to what customer experience means in the pharmaceutical sector. Uh, however, my talk is not related to that. The talk today that I'm going to give is on what not to do you know, when you, are, when you are on this digital transformation or you're on a customer experience journey. Um, during these conferences and a lot of times, you know, we will, we will come across a lot of best practices that get shared, a lot of technologies that get shared, um, and we feel that, wow, you know, we should incorporate this or this can help me get better. But this is when we really need to take a pause and think, why is this going to help me? Okay, um, now, the most important piece of customer experience is feedback, right? We understand that whatever feedback we get from the customer, we need to take some, we need to evaluate it and then we take some action around it. And just two examples coming top of my mind as of this morning is, you know, I saw these brochures on the table uh, when I walked in. How many of us actually read it? Okay, one, one in a room of maybe, or five in a room of maybe 100, right? 
that is that is clear feedback that is coming to us, right? That people are not reading it. This brochure was also sent digitally. How many of us actually opened it on our mobiles or desktops or and actually read it at that point of time? Maybe again, two in a pool of hundred. So this itself is feedback, right? And we need to be really acceptive of this feedback that probably this is not the best way to do it. How can we better improve it? I don't have an answer, but this is the challenge that I see today right now in this room. Very real life example. Today morning, uh, you know, I had taken a cab service uh, from my home to get here and uh, I just sat into the cab and I gave the driver the OTP. And the driver was like in my society itself, he was, he was almost driving and he was entering the OTP. He missed the speed breaker in front of him. And you know, there was a, like a big jerk. Would a customer experience manager sitting in an Ola or Uber office even know that this happened? Even know that it caused a bad customer experience for me? No, right? The, I mean, we are sitting in our offices, we are probably trying to figure out how do I improve the app, how do I have conversational AI, how do I make chatbots, and all of that. But exactly what is the customer going through? That is something that I would urge every customer experience manager to actually experience for him or herself, and only then would you be able to make a, uh, you know, a significant transformation in that journey. So I think I've... Yeah, we can move on. Okay. So I'm going to, I mean, the way I do presentations is more storytelling because I think that is the best way to get the message across. Okay. Um, so you've heard, everyone's heard about Cargo Cult or not really? Okay. So this is, um, this is World War II. Okay. And this is a real story. This is a real life story. This is World War II. And there is the fight going on between the US and Japan. And you have the massive Pacific Ocean in, the bet in between. And the US planes need to fly into Japan you know, for, it, for them to go and, and fight there. However, at that time, technology was not so great that a single flight could fly right across the Pacific. You needed a halt in between. The, the flights could not be for so long. So what the US did is they identified certain islands in the Pacific Ocean, which were used as, you know, temporary warehouses. And so the flights from the US used to carry all the food and milk and all the other goods, come to this island, take a halt, and then proceed on the journey. And in return, of course, to the islanders, they used to give like free, uh, you know, food and materials and etc. so that the islanders were also happy. So life was good, everyone was happy, US was happy, the islanders was happy, everything going on. The war ends, right? The World War II ended. And what happened then was the plane stopped flying. And the islanders had no clue as to why this happened, right? Why did the plane stop flying? Yeah. So you can see some of the images here, these are real images. And they were just, you know, praying up to the gods that, oh, this flying bird which was in the air, let us just pray and let the, let the food and the uh, milk and all of that come. They even built like a, a temporary aeroplane which was made out of, I don't know, hay and sticks, etc. And just hoping and hoping and hoping that help would come their way. Did help come their way? Obviously not, right? So this is the key thing. Uh, you know, when it comes to designing a customer experience journey as well. Okay. So, what is the lesson that we take away from this, right? What is it that we must not... Oh, what is this? Okay. What is it that we must not do? Uh, yeah, this is something that we must not do. <laughs> okay. But in essence, it is... Um, do not force fit any solution into your situation. You need to understand why before the how, okay? So understand why is this a challenge? Understand why is my customer saying this? Why is this particular thing happening the way it is? Before you really move to the how. That 
is the key takeaway, right? The islanders need to understand why is it that I am getting food for free rather than just the how that, okay, one plane is flying and I'm getting the food, okay? So that, if I were to leave everyone with one message, it is understand the why of what you want to do, right? Otherwise, you would just be staring um, at the clouds waiting for the gods to notice you. Okay, so this, this was my first story that I want to leave everyone behind with and with this example. Uh, this was the 15 minute bell, I have five minutes? Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, I have one more story to tell you. And this is again a real life story. This is uh, about the janitor who helped um, put a man on the moon, right? So when NASA was working on, uh, you know, on when Neil Armstrong, before Neil Armstrong was going to go on the moon, uh, they were all working in their office and President Kennedy, uh, he visited the NASA headquarters and he was generally chatting with the people there and, and he asked uh, one of the people that, you know, what do you do? You know, what do you do here at NASA? So he said that, uh, well, I'm helping put a man on the moon. And uh, that person actually was a janitor. You know, a janitor is generally a cleaner who just cleans. And President Kennedy was quite shocked. He was like, how is this even, you know, how are these two things correlated? And then what he realized is that the mission of NASA, of putting that man on the moon, was so embedded in each and every employee's mind that they didn't feel that, okay, I'm just cleaning this table or I'm just, you know, doing something. They all felt that I am actually help put a man on the moon. And many a times, this is where, uh, you know, the customer journey actually falls apart. You have suppliers, you have distributors, you have your own employees. Each of them, uh, you know, needs to be aligned with your purpose. If they are not, if they don't know what is it that we are trying to do, why is it that we are trying to do what we are trying to do, then I think things will fall between the cracks. So this is the key takeaway. Right? Each one of us is responsible for connecting the purpose of every employee in the organization with what the common goal is, right? So for GSK, our common goal is to help patients, and we have a number and all to that. But how is it that each of our roles is targeted or is aimed towards that common purpose is something that needs to be established, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you very much. I hope I've added some insight to you. Thank you.